Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Joan. I make faith, fitness and lifestyle kind of content. If you're into that, make sure you subscribe down below. Ha, so today I want us to talk about laziness. I know most of us don't view laziness as a spiritual battle, but it's one of the biggest and I think greatest spiritual battle we are facing as Christians in this day and age in a era where we have distractions and entertainment with us every day, everywhere we go. That is our phones and screens, literally. Because we do not view laziness or we are not aware that this is a spiritual battle, we are blind to the fact that this is something that's being used as a weapon against us Christians in God's kingdom. So what is laziness? Laziness, according to the dictionary oxford it says it's the quality of being unwilling to work or use energy that is idleness i know we love being idle i know we love just sitting on our couches and just scrolling on tiktok and instagram and youtube and whatever according to the bible google definition of laziness according to the bible it's a lack of effort and a disengagement in developing the skills god has given us uh -huh, that is a very big problem that we are going to look into shortly. Personally, how I became aware that I was struggling with laziness is I was reading the book of Galatians and in this particular verses, Galatians 5, 16, 17, uh, the Bible says, so I, so I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you're not to do whatever you want. Now, in Galatians 5, uh, Paul is basically advising the Christians of Galatia about the things of the flesh they're supposed to be staying away from. And he also goes on to list the fruits of the spirit. Um Laziness is not one of those that has been mentioned, but for some reason, as I was reading this, it's like the Spirit really convicted me and really brought up to me the things that I have been avoiding or procrastinating on. There are two things that I feel God had placed in my heart for me to do. One I started doing, but after starting, I felt like, wow, this is so hard, and I decided to put it on pause and maybe I would come back to it later but it's been weeks and I have never bothered to do it again. The other one I didn't even bother to start. I basically chose to be sleeping longer instead of waking up to do it. Now do you see how laziness can lead you to be a disobedient Christian, disobedient to the instructions of God? Okay let's wait for the plane to pass. <laughs> And that's not all. I've not just been avoiding the things that the Spirit had placed in my heart. I've just generally been uh, embracing idleness more. And my excuse has been looking for a house and moving has disoriented my schedule, which to some extent, it's true. It did disorient my schedule to, to some point. But there was no reason why this needed to take me weeks to get back to my routine. So as these things were being brought up to me uh, during that moment when I was reading the word, another verse that was brought to my attention was Matthew twenty six forty one. And what is happening in this particular uh, segment of Matthew 26 is that Jesus is telling his disciples they need to watch and pray. He, it was before his arrest and Jesus was there praying but his disciples were choosing to sleep uh, i'm just gonna read it matthew 26 41 watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak in that moment i really felt the conviction to learn to resist my flesh and to do what the spirit is leading me or calling me to do because i think i was reminded I was literally reminded that the Spirit is calling me to good things. Yes, they are uncomfortable, they are hard, but they are calling me to good things. They are calling me to things that could lead me to my promised land, basically, or 
cross me over to the other side of the sea or the storm that I've been wanting to get out of. And that's another thing about laziness. We cannot be here not putting in the work or doing what God wants us to do. And then we are also praying every single night, like, God, come deliver me from this. God, uh, work a miracle in my life. But you're literally equipped to do certain things that God has called you to do, but you never take the first step. I think God doesn't really want you to do a lot. He just wants you to take the first step. And if you're ever in a situation where you feel like you don't know where you're supposed to be going, just fall on your knees, call on to God. We know that the word of God says that God is close to the brokenhearted. Whenever you don't know what to do, just call on to God and ask him to give you direction. Anyway, let's go back to the laziness bit, yeah? Uh, so I think from my examples, you guys can get a picture of the process, how we convince ourselves to not do something because we desire to just be idle. Because literally, there's nothing more that you're desiring rather than idleness. You just don't want to do what is hard. You just want to sit pretty and enjoy the short term enjoyment or fulfillment instead of doing what is necessary to progress you in life. And this is how we start failing the kingdom of God or our calling to the kingdom of God because the truth is we have been called to bear fruit in God's kingdom and I think this is very well depicted in the book of Matthew 25 where Jesus talks about the parable of talents. In this parable Jesus tells us about a master who had three servants. To one he gave five talents, to another he gave two and to another he gave one. The one who was given five he went ahead and multiplied and got five more. The one who was given two he also went ahead and multiplied his two and got two more. But the one who was given one he went and hid it and sat on it and waited for the master to come back. And um, Jesus literally calls this one who, the one who was given one, a wicked and lazy servant. And what happened to this lazy servant is that that one talent that he had, it was taken away from him and given to the one who had many, the five. And basically that is who you are, the servant who was given one and went and hid his talent. You are that person, if you're the person who chooses to be idle, you choose to be lazy, you choose to procrastinate, you choose to make excuses, you choose to say, oh, this is so difficult, I can't do it, and never say that as a Christian, you serve an almighty God who's capable of doing anything. Anyway, <laughs> um, whatever excuses you'd like to give yourself and tell yourself you're not capable, in the name of just wanting to not do the hard work. Yeah, you're literally like that one servant because you have a talent, but you never use it. And God is going to take it away from you and give it to someone who's more deserving. Someone who's actually making use of the talents that he has been given. That was a bee in the house. <laughs> Where were we? So let's not be like that lazy servant. And I made a whole video on how to become a more productive person. I'm going to link it somewhere here at the top. You can go and check out my tips on how I managed to become a bit more productive. Something that I have now gotten back into it. <laughs> uh, becoming more productive after all that realization. Uh, but basically... The easiest ways, I think, always have a to-do list. Never start your day not knowing what it is you're planning to do. Like the, ne the night before the next day or at the end of your work day, write down the things that you need to be doing the next day and make sure you schedule them. Uh, I found that scheduling is super important because then now you know, okay, at 8 a.m. this is what I'm going to be doing. At 10 and this is what I'm going to be doing. You're not confused about your day. And something else about uh, having a to-do list and scheduling, it really helps you to manage your time properly because actually the biggest problem with us in procrastinating and feeling like we don't have time, our problem is that we do not manage our time properly and that is something we need to get on top of. And something good about time management, like once you learn how to do it, you're going to find that you have so much free time to actually enjoy rest or enjoy 
entertainment. So I would encourage you to, when you wake up, focus on the task ahead. And then if you finish at four, if you finish at five, if you finish at three, imagine you have the rest of the day to just do anything you please. Because you've had you, you've done what you needed to accomplish that day. And there's nothing you need to be feeling guilty about. Unless again, you're being, uh, you're trying to be smart and put in so little in your to-do list that you end up like maybe just doing one thing that is very little. Anyway, it's up to you how you do your to-do list and how you manage your time. But yeah, that's one thing. Time management. Just work with having a to-do list and Having a to-do list and scheduling your time. The other thing I would encourage you to do, especially when you want, you're thinking of starting something new, it's the Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins. There is a whole book about it and I encourage you to go and read it. But the idea is that whenever something comes in your mind, an idea that you'd want to venture into, start acting on it within the first five seconds because after that according to Mel if you take longer than five seconds you're going to talk yourself out of it and you'll end up not doing it so you can start the five second rule on as simple things as making your bed brushing your teeth cooking as simple things as those just to practice and then you can do it with the bigger ideas that come to your mind or uh, the bigger tasks that feel like they are so hard and just You'll progress a lot more. So anyway, guys, beware that laziness is a spiritual battle that's being used against you in this day and age of social media because you're ever distracted and you fail to focus on the things that God wants you to focus on. So yeah, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you subscribe, make sure you share with a friend. And I'm sorry about my voice. I have a cold. I hope it wasn't as annoying as I feel it is. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.